Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Carrie's Gardening Channel. So, um, today is August 31st, 2020, and uh, it's hard to believe that September is next month. Um, today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting some flowers here out of the greenhouses and outside. So, um, that's what's in today's episode. So, please stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing that you need um, when you're doing your cut flowers is you want a nice, good, sharp pruners. Uh, this is a Fiskars pruners here. It does come with a little cap. Um, I did just clean these because you want to start with sterilized pruners uh, that will help prevent um, blights, viruses, and different things from transferring from one plant to another. So I've got to unwrap the cucumber here because the crazy thing has attacked my celosia plants. So this one here, as you can see, come in closer please, Thank you. is starting to produce its pollen here. And you can see it's opening up more versus one over here where it's still closed. So I'm going to be taking this one here off and I'm going to be going, let's see here, about down to here. I'm going to be making my cut on a 45 degree angle right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow this piece here to branch out with another branch and it's going to give me more blooms. So again here, my cucumber has attacked the stem here. See here? We have this one here. And I'm just going to take the leaves off here. And I'm going to put it back in my basket. I'll throw the leaves in here for the compost pile. Let's see what else. This one here is a good one here. Yeah, let me get this out of here. These cucumbers were supposed to be hung up, but unfortunately that did not happen. So now they're attacking my celosia and anything else that they can possibly find to attack. Um... Now, one of the reasons why you cut your stems on a 45 degree angle is it's the same thing as when you're trying to drink through a straw. If your straw is flat against the bottom of your um, glass, you won't be able to get your water up through or whatever you're drinking. And it's the same way for your flowers. So you want to always make sure, especially for cut flowers, fresh, you cut them on a 45 degree angle. And then they'll be able to properly take up the water that they need. Now, um... When you put these in a vase, you will recut them so that they get that fresh water to come up through. And by cutting them on a 45 degree angle, uh, just above a leaf knot, it'll allow your plants to send out the extra side shoots so that they can branch out more and give you more flowers. So these are your side shoots here. And this will produce another flower, as you can see it's already starting to do here. And then that will give you another uh, branch of celosia. Now, uh, this particular variety here is the Kramer series. Uh, I did do a video of this series on my channel. It is a heavily branching plant. Now, um, some of your celosias only bloom one time. Um, so it's a good idea to do some research on what variety um, that you're going to be getting to make sure that it will produce more than one main flower. So um, a perfect example, and I actually just seen this one here, of uh, one that will put the side shoots off is uh, this here is the Kramer's Rose here. And this was the main stem here which I cut on a 45 degree angle and this here branched off. And you can see the beautiful celosias up here. Now there's a bumblebee up there and I don't want to make him mad at me so uh, I'm not going to play with the flowers. But that's a perfect example of how they branch off. And that gives you more blooms then that you can cut for uh, your cut flowers.
Now this one here um, is a larger flowered one. It just produced a larger flower on it. And uh, this is going to be absolutely beautiful here. So I definitely want to take this one. Now you want to pick your solutions when they're in their prime. And what can happen is, is if you let these go too long when they're blooming, they'll start giving seeds, which um, when you're putting arrangements together, the seeds can kind of fall all over the table. They fall on your water. So um, timing your celosia right for picking it is uh, really important. So this one here, it's not too far advanced and uh, it's not too, um, imma too premature, is the word I'm going to use. So I'm going to cut this one here. You can see this one has a lot of side branches on it, these little guys here. So let's see how long I want this stem here. Cut it right about, oops, about here. And there's a side branch on the side that I don't want to cut off because you can see here it branched off here. Right here it branched off and I want to let that go because that's going to give me that little one up there. So this is a very unique different one. You can see this one here actually has a flat stem. And uh, I'm not 100% sure why some of them have flat stems. But um, some are more round, some are more flat, but they still work great for arrangements. Now, one thing with um, your celosias, whether you're growing a crested type or a plume type, you want to pick these before they start turning brown. And I'll show you an example over here of one that went just a little past its prime. So we'll be right back. So this one here, um, it's a little past its prime there. You can see uh, it lost some of its um, fuzziness there and it's trying to turn a little brown. So um, I'm definitely going to have to take this one here off. Uh, I was watching it, and um, it's just kind of one of those things. The more you work with cut flowers and stuff, you'll start to um, kind of see when they need to be cut. So um, this one's going to come off then. Okay, so I'm going to cut some marigolds here. I have something specific with my marigolds that I look for. Um, depending on like what texture you're going for, I look for them when they're nice and full in the centers. Let's see what else do I have. There we go. Oops. And when you prune your marigold plants, again, um, you want to cut them right above your leaf knots here. Because what that's going to do is that's going to send these shoots out here and it's going to give me a fuller, bushier plant, which will equal more blooms. Let's see. Ooh, that's a pretty one there. Look at that one. That's a gorgeous one there. Oh. Let's see what else we got here that we can cut. Hi, Dweezies! Look who came to visit! Hi, Dweezie! You want to see what's growing in Sissy's greenhouse? Huh? Okay. These are um, our celosia here. This is a different type of celosia. This is a wheat type celosia. So it looks like a plume. And um, it's just a little bit different. So I'm going to cut some of this. And again, I follow the stems down. Okay, so I'm cutting this stem right here. Leaves in the way. And you can see these leaves here, they're going to shoot out new shoots. And then it's going to give me more flowers like it did here. I've gotten multiple cuttings off of these here. So we have this. And my mom loves these. She said these remind her of uh, the little Christmas trees that they put out um, like around the trains and stuff. And uh, so I grow these for her. My favorite's the brain type. Let's see what else we got here. Grab a few of these here. 
And my soil on these is nice and moist. Um, if you get them from dry plants, the plants are going to be stressed and your flowers are going to fade fast and they're not going to last as long. Let's move these. There you go. Can you So um, I switched pruners because as you can see, this stalk here is very thick and uh, my other pruners would not have cut through it. So I had to switch here. I'm just going to take my pruners here. They are nice and clean. I'm just going to take a cut and cut right there. And as you can see, it's branching off here already. So that's going to continue to uh, come up and give me another um, side shoot there. But look at this. And these, as they're maturing, before you cut them, will actually start to unfold more. But um, I don't want to let this go past its prime. I love the coloring in it. And I love it has like the pinks, has your yellows, your oranges, um, your coral colors. So uh, this is going to be perfect for what I want right here. So one thing I want to show you is with this particular one here. Remember how I was saying on the other one how it had that thick stem? This one has a really thick, wide stem to it. And these flowers here can be top heavy. So um, like whatever vase you pick to put these in or like if you want to put them in a mason jar or something like that, you want to make sure that um, your arrangement isn't lopsided or put like um, some of those little gem beads in the bottom to help hold it down to give it some extra weight because these can be top heavy and you don't want your whole arrangement to fall over. So this is what I got so far here and now it's time to uh, go outside and um, pick some stuff from out there. Okay, so this is some of a uh, status here and um, this is ready to harvest right here. So now some people can twist this off down at the base. I'm not one of those people so I have to use pruners to cut it off right down at the base. Let's see. See what else then we have. So um, this is what I got so far for my harvest. Now um, my straw flowers they're not at the point yet to harvest so I couldn't take any of those today. So um, if you want to do like a quick bouquet. We're going to be cutting the stems, by the way, of these again. There we go. And that's a quick put together sample. Uh, 
of a, a bouquet that you can put together from just some colors. I have a whole lot more left over. There's a whole lot of possibilities that you could do with this, but um, this is just a quick sample here. And what you want to do is you want to recut your stems on about a 45 degree angle and then put them in uh, some warm water in a nice clean vase. You want to make sure that your vase is clean. Um, if your vase isn't clean, it can harbor uh, bacteria from previous vases, or, yeah, from previous bouquets, sorry about that, that were in it. So um, starting with a clean vase, nice fresh clean water is a great way to go. So if you like my video, please like, comment, subscribe. Please don't forget to hit the little notification button of times I put a new video on. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'll have a link down in the description for my Twitter account. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day. Bye.